Imagine a river so powerful that it could light up an entire continent. This is the potential of the Congo River, as Africa's second largest river with one of the highest water discharges in the world. The Congo has untapped energy reserves that could transform the Democratic Republic of Congo and neighboring countries. The Inga Dams project, for instance, aims to annex this force, promising a vast supply of clean energy that could bridge Central African's energy gap. Could this river's immense power finally unlock sustainable electricity for millions across Africa? The powerful waters of the Congo River has long been seen as a potential energy source for much of Africa, given its vast hydroelectric potential. Yet, annexing this renewable energy has been a challenge, with the Democratic Republic of Congo's turbulent history often casting doubt on its feasibility. However, an agreement with South Africa to purchase electricity from this planned hydroelectric project may finally bring this vision closer to reality within the next decade. The project site, the Bondi Valley, lies alongside the Congo River, where approximately 30,000 villagers currently reside. Once flooded and dammed, it will transform into a giant lake. This massive project, known as Grand Inga, could become the world's largest hydroelectric facility with a planned generation capacity of over 40,000 megawatts, more than double the output of China's Tree Gorge Dam. Located in the Bas Congo province in DR Congo southwest, about 50 km 30 miles from the river's mouth, where there are powerful rapids and waterfalls, Grand Inga setup will include a single dam wall and six different hydroelectric power stations. Each station represents a separate phase with Inga Tree as the first, which aims to produce 4,800 megawatts of electricity. Of this, 2,500 megawatts is handmarked for South Africa and 1,300 megawatts for Katanga, a region with significant mining operations. The DR Congo government remains optimistic about demand for the electricity Grand Inga could generate. There are huge power deficits not only in DR Congo but across the continent. In places like South Africa and Nigeria with potential for distribution as far as Egypt. Along the initial construction, two new power lines will be laid, one to connect with South Africa and another to serve Kinshasa, the capital. These are essential as existing infrastructure lacks the capacity to carry the expected power volumes. Funding for this first phase of Grand Inga, projected at around $11 billion, is expected to come from the World Bank, the African Development Bank, and private investors, encouraged by South Africa's commitment to the project. The second phase remains in early planning, with Nigeria already showing interest in purchasing an estimated 3,000 megawatts. In its entirety, Grand Inga's dam wall could be modified to accommodate increased water flow as each phase is added, thanks to preliminary feasibility studies by Canadian firm Highcom and France EDF, which have yielded positive results. The project's grand ambition comes in the context of a country where less than 20% of the population has reliable access to electricity. In the capital, Kinshasa, only wealthy families have generators, while most residents rely on intermittent power, candles, and flashlights. The public frustration is compounded by the fact that electricity generated by the Congo River will primarily serve other nations before addressing domestic shortages. DR Congo's previous attempts at harnessing the Congo River's potential in the 1970s and 1980s with Inga 1 and 2 were marred in financial and management issues. Corruption and lack of funds meant that even 10 years after completion, the dams were in disrepair. The government of DR Congo assures critics that Grand Inga's approach will be different promising private management and funding to avoid the pitfalls of public mismanagement. However, several non-governmental organizations and NGOs remain skeptical. 
The Association Action for Development and Life argues that renovation of Inga 1 and 2 alone could meet DR Congo's current power needs without necessitating a massive socially disruptive new project. The social impact is also a pressing concern. Thousands of people will need to be relocated from the Bondi Valley to make way for the project, though plans for resettlement are vague. We were promised jobs with Inga 1 and 2 but we received nothing, not even electricity or running water because Joseph Mvi, a local villager chief, voicing concerns about how his community will manage without clarity on where they will be moved or how they will make a living. Despite these uncertainties, proponents argue that Grand Inga could be transformative for Dira Congo and the continent. Failing to capitalize on Inga's potential will be a missed opportunity. There is need for robust maintenance and transparent billing practices to prevent history from repeating itself. If Grand Inga achieves its potential, it could mark a turning point in addressing Africa's growing energy needs. But with the history of others, the DR Congo must navigate challenges carefully to ensure that the project can bring power not only to the region but to its own people. Thank you.